All right, and now for a little balanced scorecard. So the balanced scorecard is a lot like what it sounds, a performance measurement system that includes a balance of financial as well as non-financial performance measures. So financial performance measures include earnings per share, return on investment, return on assets, residual income, economic value added. Those are all financial performance measures they're expressed in dollar amounts or ratios or percentages and these financial performance measures will gauge things like profitability costs and they're well understood by financial managers of the organization and the bonuses of these financial managers often ride on these financial performance measures both financial performance measures as well as non-financial performance measures though are needed to manage an organization and that's what the balanced scorecard's all about. We need a balance of performance measures, not just heavily financial, but also non-financial performance measures too. Non-financial performance measures are expressed in non-monetary terms and include measures of customer satisfaction, customer retention, productivity, quality, employee satisfaction. These non-financial performance measures are better understood by lower and middle management, those without financial accounting expertise. So a balanced scorecard is a performance measurement system that includes financial as well as non-financial performance measures. And the balanced scorecard was developed by Kaplan and Norton. See, a little balance there. Wasn't all Kaplan, wasn't all Norton, Kaplan and Norton. Maybe that'll help you remember who designed it. All right, according to Kaplan and Norton, which of the following is an example of a performance measure needed to manage an organization? One, financial performance measures such as return on investment. Okay. Two, non-financial performance measures such as employee satisfaction. Yeah, because here you'd have one financial performance measure and one non-financial performance measure, and both are needed to manage an organization. So I'm like in C here. According to Kaplan and Norton, financial performance measures such as return on investment are needed to effectively manage an organization. Financial performance measures are expressed in terms of dollar amounts, ratios, percentages. And two is also correct. According to Kaplan and Norton, non-financial performance measures such as employee satisfaction are needed to effectively manage an organization. But non-financial performance measures are expressed in non-monetary terms. All right, the purpose of a balanced scorecard. We know that we need financial as well as non-financial performance measures to manage an organization. One reason is that the financial managers relate to the ROI, the earnings per share, but the non-financial managers, those in production, they relate better to non-financial measures. And they would rather see their performance be measured by something that they could control. So non-performance measures are better understood by production managers, by middle managers, those who haven't had financial accounting, so they would want to be judged by a different set of performance measures, ones that they would understand. So a balanced scorecard is a strategic performance measurement and management framework for implementing strategy by translating an organization's mission and strategy into a set of performance measures, both financial and non-financial. All right, now this is very specific to the balanced scorecard the four primary perspectives of the balanced scorecard, and you got to know these four, are financial perspective, customer perspective, internal business process perspective, and learning and growth perspective. Those are the big four primary perspectives of the balanced scorecard. And within each primary perspective of the balanced scorecard are key strategic objectives. So within the financial perspective of the balanced scorecard, what are some key strategic objectives? Increase profitability. That's a financial perspective. Increase profits. Increase revenue growth. Increase free cash flow. What about with regard to customer perspective? Key strategic objectives in the customer perspective include increasing customer satisfaction, increasing revenue per customer, attracting new customers. These are key strategic objectives within the customer perspective. Okay, within the internal business process perspective, strategic objectives include improve cycle time, 
which leads to an increase in on-time delivery, and also to improve quality performance. These would be your strategic objectives within internal business processes. There's a term in manufacturing that they ask on the exam known as throughput time. Throughput is the time it takes to turn raw materials into a completed product, and that would be a strategic objective with regard to the internal business process perspective of the balanced scorecard. So in this internal business process perspective, within internal business processing perspective, we find the company's strategic objectives include operating effectively and efficiently, including focus on production costs, distribution, quality, and time for processes that are critical to the customer, such as number of defects. And we also said cycle time. Cycle time is the time from order to delivery to the customer. Customer places an order. How long does it take for the customer to get the order? And also after the sale customer service, that relates to internal business processes. So our final perspective under the balanced scorecard, we have learning and growth perspective. And the strategic objectives here include reducing the time from pilot program to full implementation, reducing the number of safety incidents, percentage of ideas and best practices shared across the organization. So within learning and growth perspective, we find the focus is on performance measures relating to employees. For example, employee satisfaction, hours of training per employee, IT expenditure per employee. Strategic objectives would include hiring employees with IT skills, with R&D skills, reduce the number of safety incidents, percentage of ideas and best practices shared across the organization. These would all be under the category of learning and growth perspective. All right, so the questions that they'll ask on a CPA exam will be something like this. According to Kaplan and Norton, which of the following is one of the four perspectives of the balanced scorecard? And we have learning and growth perspective, which is one of the four. Investment and assets perspective, which is not one of the four. So we'll go with A, one only, because the four primary perspectives of the balanced scorecard are financial perspective, customer perspective, internal business process perspective, and in this case, learning and growth perspective. So one letter A is right. According to Kaplan and Norton, which of the following perspectives of the balanced scorecard focuses on performance measures relating to employees? And that would be learning and growth perspective, letter C. Learning and growth perspective of the balanced scorecard focuses on performance measures relating to employees, such as employee morale, employee turnover. According to Kaplan and Norton, which of the following is not one of the four perspectives of the balanced scorecard? Customer perspective is, and financial perspective is. So neither one of these are not one of the four. So double negative. We'll go with D here. One is wrong because customer perspective is one of the four perspectives. Key strategic objectives of the customer perspective include increase customer satisfaction, increase revenue per customer, attract new customers. And two is wrong because financial perspective is one of the four perspectives. Key strategic objectives here would be to increase profitability, increase revenue growth, increase free cash flow. According to Kaplan and Norton, which of the following performance measures would be part of the internal business processes perspective of the balanced scorecard? Our internal business processes, we're talking about the company running more effectively and efficiently. That would be on-time delivery for sure, Roman numeral two. Not employee satisfaction, because employee satisfaction is part of learning and growth, because that has to do with personnel. Learning and growth has to do with your employees and your people working there. So that would be letter B. According to Kaplan and Norton, which of the following performance measures would be part of the learning and growth perspective of the balanced scorecard? One says information technology expenditure per employee. Yes. Hours of training per employee. Yes, because learning and growth is all about personnel. So let's go with C. According to Kaplan and Norton, which of the following performance measures will be part of the learning and growth perspective of the balanced scorecard? Customer satisfaction? No, that will be part of your customer perspective. And for that matter, number three, customer retention would also. So one and three have to do with customer perspective. But two, employee satisfaction, let's go with B. That has to do with learning and growth. 
according to Kaplan and Norton, which of the following performance measures would be part of the customer perspective of the balanced scorecard? One, percentage of highly satisfied customers, sure. Two, percentage of ideas and best practices shared across the organization. No, that would be learning and growth. So let's go with A, one only. So according to Kaplan and Norton, which of the following performance measures would be part of the financial perspective of the balanced scorecard? Free cash flow would definitely be financial perspective. But cost per unit, that would be internal business process perspective. Cost per unit would not be financial perspective, but part of internal business process. Because cost per unit has to do with effective and efficient operations. So that would be internal business process. A is the answer. All right, according to Kaplan and Norton, which of the following performance measures would be part of the internal process perspective of the balanced scorecard, the internal business process perspective? Percentage of ideas and best practices shared across the organization? No, that is learning and growth. So one is out. Two, total cost of quality. Yes, like your failure costs, right, your nonconformance and your conformance costs. Your cost of quality, that would be internal business process perspective. So let's go with B, two only. According to Kaplan and Norton, revenue growth and the asset turnover ratio will be part of what perspective of the balance scorecard? That's financial perspective. Absolutely, letter D. According to Kaplan and Norton, production cost, distribution cost, and after the sale customer service will be part of what perspective of the balance scorecard? And that will be internal process perspective, letter B. All right, according to Kaplan and Norton, which of the following perspectives of the balanced scorecard specifies performance characteristics of the company's personnel? Well, personnel, that's learning and growth, letter A. According to Kaplan and Norton, which of the following perspectives of the balanced scorecard includes hiring personnel with a strong R&D background and that's learning and growth, letter D. According to Kaplan and Norton, if a company does hire personnel with strong R&D background, the new and improved products that result is a strategic goal from which of the following perspectives of the balanced scorecard. See how one is leading into another. Let's read it again. According to Kaplan and Norton, if a company does hire personnel with a strong R&D background, the new and improved products that result is a strategic goal from which of the following perspectives of the balanced scorecard. We'll see how we just moved from learning and growth, hiring people with a strong R&D background, and that should result in new and improved products, and that's a strategic goal from internal business process perspective, letter B. What we just saw in the last two multiple choice questions is that effective scorecards should be designed so that the tactics that promote achievement of strategic goals in one area support achievement of strategic goals in other areas. So the tactic of hiring employees that have R&D experience would hopefully result in new and improved products and that would promote strategic goals in a different area the area of internal business process. So if they ask you more than just a multiple choice question on the balanced scorecard, they could ask you maybe a writing assignment or something. Just remember that effective scorecards should be designed so that the tactics that promote achievement of strategic goals in one area support achievement of strategic goals in other areas. And we'll continue with this same example when we go to this question. According to Kaplan and Norton, if a company does hire personnel with strong R&D background, the new and improved products that result should help a company penetrate new markets, which is a strategic goal from which of the following perspectives of the balanced scorecard. So now we've gone from hiring the employees with a strong R&D background. Those employees have developed new and improved products, and that should help the company penetrate new markets. So now we've gone into another perspective of the balanced scorecard, the penetrating of new markets, which is customer perspective, letter C. See how that works? We just saw in the last three multiple choice questions now that effective scorecards should be designed so that the tactics that promote achievement of strategic goals in one area support achievement of strategic goals 
in other areas, right? We started out hiring people with a strong R&D background. We said that's learning and growth. Then from there, those people that we hired with a strong R&D background came out with new and improved products. We said that's internal business process. And those new and improved products helped us penetrate new markets, and that's customer perspective. So once again, scorecards should be designed so the tactics that promote achievement of strategic goals in one area support achievement of strategic goals in other areas. All right, now check it out. According to Kaplan and Norton, if a company does hire personnel with strong R&D background, the new and improved products that result should help a company penetrate new markets, which is a strategic goal from the customer perspective, and therefore should generate additional revenue, which is the strategic goal of which of the following perspectives of the balance scorecard? And that would, of course, be financial, letter D. So what we just saw in the last four multiple choice questions is that effective scorecard should be designed so that the tactics that promote achievement of strategic goals in one area support achievement of strategic goals in other areas.